Bonjour à tous. Hello everyone. Hope you are doing well. So a lot of people have asked us about traveling to Egypt. So we thought we are going to create a comprehensive travel guide on how to actually visit Egypt. Egypt is one of the top destinations of the year according to TripAdvisor. And we have visited Egypt three times and the last one is in January 2022. We hope that you have watched our travel video of Egypt. If not, please click here and you will find out what you are going to experience in Egypt. So let's begin. So first thing first is currency. The currency of Egypt is Egyptian pound, but euro and US dollar are widely accepted. Now, if you are planning to use credit card for your hotel and accommodation, please contact them because not everyone accepts credit card. We did have problem with one of our credit cards, so to make sure that you are having no problems, keep more than one credit card with you. Cash is king in Egypt, so keep some Egyptian pound with you. Do minimum currency exchange in the airport because they give very bad exchange rate. Do the rest exchange in some bank. In fact, some hotels have bank inside their hotel building. You can try there as well because they give good exchange rate, but not all. There are many currency exchange places. Your driver or guide can easily take you to one, but do not do any currency exchange from an individual person. Always go to a bank or a currency exchange bureau. You don't know who will accept what. So better to keep US dollar and Egyptian pound both with you. They consider US dollar and euro one is to one in some places. Very strange. So keeping US dollar is way more cheaper than euro. Okay. Now that you have the currency sorted out, there are a lot to talk about. So we have taken some notes to make sure that we make the guide comprehensive and we don't miss anything. Now me being me, you will also get time to time some interesting photo tips that you don't find in the guidebooks. Okay, now the main thing, package trip or self-planned trip? Well, it depends on your choice. If you want a hassle-free but tight schedule trip, go for a package trip. But if you are like us who want to be independent and a bit flexible, plan trip is very good for you. Make your plan by yourself and it will be way more cheaper than a package trip. And with this guide, you can do it very easily. So assuming we are like us, who is planning to do a trip yourself, the main topics are where and how. We have visited Luxor, Cairo, Aswan, Abu Simbel and the Bahari Oasis. There are many other places in Egypt which is not that much visited. We have not visited them but we have a plan to visit those places as well. But in this one, we will only cover the places I mentioned before. Now if you are doing uh, Harguda or uh, Sharm Sheikh all inclusive, don't bother watching this one because there is not much to think about. You just book a hotel, jump into a flight, go there, sleep and eat. It's nothing different than any other beach vacation. But here, it is only about those places which are much more interesting in Egypt. You will start your trip from Cairo. There are few international flights which go to Luxor as well. But most of the people prefer to start from Cairo as the flight options are more there. We did the same. As we all know, Cairo is the home to the Great Pyramid of Giza. But it can be very tricky as well. So let's start with the transportation from the airport. We took a fixed taxi from booking.com and it was pretty good, a good price and also it came at right time, the driver was nice. Do not get in the hassle of the local taxi because you do not want to ruin your trip before it already starts. Cairo being the capital city of Egypt and most populated one, it has a lot of restrictions, especially with photography. If you have watched our previous Cairo video, you will understand what I'm talking about. But there is this great pyramid and there are many other places to visit in Cairo as well. The Cairo Museum, the Mosque of Muhammad Ali and many more. You will find more details about that in the description below. Buy a local SIM in Cairo. All kind of communication in Egypt works on WhatsApp. You are going to communicate a lot with your guide or your driver. So a local SIM is mandatory. And you can also use this for internet finding places, seeing the maps and everything. So it's very useful. We got a SIM from Cairo airport itself from Vodafone. It was something like $30, which had 30 GB of internet and I think 200 minutes of local call free. It was very, very useful. We will recommend that you keep two full days for Cairo, if possible, three days. Because one full day you will need to visit the pyramid complex area. The rest of the Cairo you can visit in the second and third day. Now let's talk about accommodation at Cairo. 
we have our favorite three hotels in Cairo. We have given the details in the description below. The first one being the Marriott Mina House. It's a great hotel with the amazing view of the pyramid and interior of the hotel is beautiful, but it's expensive. The next one is Hayat. In that, you will get the best view of pyramid with breakfast. And there are many other hotels around it, which also has pretty good view of the pyramid complex. And the third being the Ramses Hilton. It used to be a very good hotel. It has run down a little bit at this point of time. But if you are taking a Nile view room, you get the best view of the Egyptian skyline from that room. Everything can be organized by WhatsApp in Egypt. We took a local guide to visit the pyramid complex area because he knows how the system works there. It was really very helpful. You can get his contact number in the description below. But it's not mandatory. Of course, you can go by your own. But we recommend that you take a guide at least in Cairo. If you go to visit the pyramid complex in winter, go there somewhere after midday. Do not go there early because it gets very foggy and you almost not see anything. If you are going there any other season, go there very early because it gets packed with people. And if you are there, do not miss the camel ride to visit the vista of nine pyramids together. It's fascinating. If you would like to visit the pyramid complex more than once within five days and want to visit the other historical sites as well, we will recommend to buy Cairo Pass. It will be way more economic and time saving than buy individual tickets. You can buy the Cairo Pass from the ticket counter of Giza Pyramid which is close to the Mina House. More information about Cairo Pass can be found in the description below. Even though Cairo is the home of Great Pyramid, one of the seven wonders of the world, our next destination, Luxor, impressed us way more than Cairo. Luxor misses the chaos of Cairo and it has a lot of history attractions and it does not have all those restrictions either. So for us, Luxor definitely scores way higher than Cairo. If you have not visited our Luxor video, do that now and you will see it yourself. In Luxor, you really don't need a guide. But one of these can be very interesting as it says a lot about the history of the places and increases the interest of visiting. If you want to visit Luxor properly, you will need at least three or four full days. You can do it within two or three days, but it will be too hectic and you will miss all the good ones that are a little bit outside from Luxor. About the hotels to stay in Luxor, we put them in the comment below. In Luxor, you can go from one place to another place by a local taxi. This is where your negotiation skill will be tested. If they say 200, tell them 100, just make it 50%. Or you can inquire the price from the hotel itself, or you can rent a car with a driver and with a pre-negotiated price. Our taxis from the hotel, they are way more expensive. We got our taxi from a local guide. You can find his details in the description below. We used to call them a few minutes before we have to go somewhere and they used to come there, they used to stay with us for a long time. We used to go out very early in the morning for our photography, we used to stay for a long time there and there was absolutely no problem. If possible, rent a bigger van than a smaller car. In Luxor area, the speed breakers are really crazy. They are very high and all the small cars get stuck there. So they cross it very slowly and you end up with losing your time. So if you can pay a little more and rent a bigger van, it will save your time. We purchased Luxor Pass and the entrance to all the historic monuments of Luxor is included on that. But we did have to purchase separate tickets for photography because our camera and tripods were not included in the price of the Luxor Pass. Luxor Pass can be found in Karnak Temple. Just next to that big model of Karnak Temple, you go next to it and go left and there is a little room where you can find the Luxor Pass. Bring dollar or euro with you and also a copy of your passport and a passport site picture because that will be needed for Luxor Pass. You will find more information about Luxor Pass in the description below. Keep the photo ticket handy because it will literally be checked 100 times. It's needed if you are using a bigger camera and tripod. In some places you don't need it for camera but you need for tripod. So check it in the ticket counter before entering. But photography with mobile is absolutely free. In Luxor we visited Luxor Temple, Karnak Temple, Valley of Kings and Queens, Dandara Temple Complex, and Edfu. Do not miss the light and sound of Edfu. It is way better than the light and sound of Karnak Temple. Balloon ride over Luxor is a must thing. We missed it in our last two visit, but did it this time and it's absolutely stunning. 
if you want to get the place for yourself, you have to go there early. Remember, those places open at 6 o'clock with the exception of Karnak Temple, which opens at 7. By 8 o'clock, they get completely full of people. So you have to choose between your comfortable breakfast at hotel or the thrill of visiting those places alone for yourself. Valley of Kings and Queens need an expensive extra ticket to photograph with camera. Tripod is totally not allowed there and photographing with mobile is as usually free. We put a link in the description below to give more detail about Valley of Kings and Queens. Don't miss the tomb of Queen Nofertari in the Valley of Queens. It is less visited and it has an extra ticket which is included in the Luxor Pass but the interior of it is absolutely jaw-dropping. After that, we moved more towards south to the beautiful home of Nubians, Aswan. There is not much places to see in Aswan, but the setting of the city is really beautiful. And you should do a Faluka ride there. It's like going back a few thousand years. In Aswan, you don't really need a guide. We booked a local taxi. You can find the details in the description below. We visited the great Phila Temple, we also went to a colorful Nubian village and did some tranquil Faluka ride over Nile. In fact, you can do a beautiful cruise ship trip between Luxor and Aswan. You can go there with a big cruise or with Faluka. We have also visited the temple of Komombo. It's a bit far from Aswan. And don't miss the light and sound of Phile temple. It's really beautiful. Bring a light jacket because at night it will be a little cold and you need to take a boat ride to reach the Phila temple. Aswan doesn't have that many good hotel options. We have added some of our favorite ones in the description below. In fact, very interesting ones would be the Nubian homestay, especially the ones that is close to the Phila temple. You can reach from Cairo to Luxor by flight. It takes around one hour. You can also go to Cairo to Aswan by flight. It takes around one hour, 20 minutes. You can take a luxurious sleeper train from Cairo to Luxor. The same train also goes from Cairo to Aswan. But if you look at the price, the train is going to be a little bit more expensive than the flight. But if you go by train, you can save one night of hotel fare, but at the same time, you are going to lose one extra morning in the commute. For us, we prefer the flight as it gives us an extra morning for photography. You can also go from Cairo to Luxor or Aswan using car, cruise ships or a local train but as you can see it is not really a practical option for most of the tourists. To commute between Luxor and Aswan it is better to take a car. It takes around three or three and a half hours. There is also an option of train and the cruise. Train is normally not preferred by most of the tourists. The cruise is a viable option if you have three or four days with you. You can find the details of the train and flight booking website in the description below. Next, we went further south to visit the great temple of Abu Simbel. You can get there by flight or you can take a three days beautiful cruise ship from Aswan over Lake Nasser. Now, probably the most flexible way to get there is by car. We took a big car because we had a lot of photo equipments and we paid around $100 per person. But that also includes one night stay at Abu Simbel. Most of the people go to Abu Simbel on a day trip. They start very early in the morning from Aswan and finish the trip by midday. So from morning till midday, it's very much crowded. But if you stay nearby, you can either go before 8 a.m. or after midday and get the entire area free for yourselves. It is like enjoying the place like Ramses II. Don't miss the Abu Simbel light and sound show if you are staying there. It is highly recommended. We stayed in the Seti Abu Simbel Hotel it's very close to the temple, but it's a bit overpriced, but it's all right. There are other guest houses around, but during the COVID, we wanted to stay in a renowned place. After that, we went to the magical desert region of Egypt. Of course, we had to do a stopover at Cairo. A more detailed video of White Desert and the surrounding area is coming soon. As like any other places, we have shared the details of our guide of White Desert in the description below. It's a place that you absolutely have to experience. This is the so-called popular region of White Desert, but there are more things to see than only the White Desert. White Desert is very popular. Most of the people go from Cairo as a one-night trip, and to me, it's a complete waste of time. There are many other places in that region than White Desert itself, and from Cairo, it is very far, so people who go there for one night, they reach at White Desert very late in the evening, 
and then they only experience the sunset, sleep in the tent, eat, and next day morning they come back. To me, it's really a complete waste of time. We spent four nights at this region and it was very good. The great thing is that with the help of this video, you can make your own plan of Egypt trip by sitting at home and by using only the WhatsApp. And also you can make your own itinerary by your own choice and flexibility and maybe paying the half price that you will pay to the travel agent. So that's it. Hope this will help you plan a great Egypt trip. And if you have any more questions, please write us in the comment below and we are going to respond to you as soon as possible. Hope you have liked this video and if you did so, please give us a thumbs up. It really means a lot. And if you have already not done so, please subscribe and press the bell icon to get notification of our upcoming videos. So, ciao for now and see you at our Luxor Hot Air Balloon Ride. Bye-bye.